Good morning everyone. Today we're going to discuss module 5 part 1 science 7 quarter 2. Okay, this is your science teacher, Sir Topper. Before we start the lesson proper, let us pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear God, thank you for our school. We pray it would be a safe place of learning, fun, and friendship. Please watch over all our teachers, children, and families. Help us to learn new things, to explore the world together, and to play and be happy. Help us to have love for each other, to have forgiveness at our heart, and to rebuild kindness into every day. Amen. Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this is all about Science 7, Quarter 2, Module 5, entitled, You and Me from Cells to Tiny. Okay, so hi students, how are you today? I think you are excited with the lesson for today. Without further ado, let's proceed. Today we're going to discuss all about cell discovery and theory. So here is our most essential learning competency. Explain why the cell is considered the basic structural and functional unit of all organisms. The module is divided into two lessons, namely, for our first lesson today, we have cell discovery and theory. And for lesson two for tomorrow, we have cell types, structures, and functions. After going through this module, you are expected to number one, familiarize the history, theory, types, structures, and functions of a cell. Draw a typical cell and label its basic parts, and explain why a cell is considered as basic structural and functional unit of life. Okay, here we go. What I need to know. This module was designed and written with you in mind. It is here to help you master the you and me from SAS to tiny. The scope of this module permits it to be used in many different learning situations. The language used recognized the diverse vocabulary level of students. The lessons are arranged to follow the standards sequence of the course. So before we have the main lesson, let's have the review. What I know, directions, choose the letter of the best answer from the given choices. K in your answers in our class point up. And our class point code is 28339. Are you ready? Number one, what is a cell? Is it a number? B, an animal? B, an imagination, D, a microscopic structure. Okay, that is correct. It is letter D, a microscopic structure. Let's have number two. When was the cell first discovered? A, 1655, B, 1665, C, 1675, D, 1685. That's correct. It's letter B, 1665. Number three question. Who was the biologist who discovered the cell? A. Anton van Leeuwenhoek. B. Theodore Swan. C. Matthias Salyden. D. Robert Hook. Very good. That is correct. The correct answer is letter D. Robert Hook. Number four question. Who among the following scientists below is not a proponent of the cell theory? A. Matthias Schleiden. B. Theodore Swan. C. Rudolf Virchow. Or D. Robert Hooke. Okay. The correct answer is Robert Hooke. Next, which of the following comprises a greater portion in a cell? A. DNA B. RNA 
C. Water. D. Protein. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. Water. Number six. Biologists arrived to a conclusion that formulated the cell theory, which among the statements below are parts of the cell theory. One, all living things are made up of cells. Two, all living cells come from pre-existing cells. Three, all plants and animals are composed of cells. Four, cells are the basic structural and functional unit of all organisms. Is it A, one and two only? B, one and three only? C, one, two, and three? D, two, three, and four only? Okay, for this number, it is letter C. Number seven, question. How were cells discovered? Arrange the following statements in its correct order. One, it was observed that a piece of cork was composed of many tiny compartments. Two, a thin slice of cork was examined under microscope. Three, these tiny compartments were named cells. Four, the cells observed were non-living. Is it A, 1, 2, 3, 4? B, 1, 4, 3, 2? C, 3, 2, 1, 4? Or D, 2, 1, 3, 4? Okay, time is up. The correct answer is letter C. 3. If these tiny compartments were named cells. 2. A thin slice of cork was examined under microscope. 1. It was observed that a piece of cork was composed of many tiny compartments. And 4. The cells observed were non-living. Let's have number 8. Read the statements within the box. Which of the choices below correctly describes them? 1. In 1664, Lewin Hook discovered cells. 2. Hook first discovered cells. A. All statements are true. B. All statements are false. C. 2 is true while 1 is false. D. 1 is true but while 2 is false. Okay, that's correct. It's letter C. 2 is true while while 1 is false. Number 9. The discovery of a cell brought scientific developments in performing experiments. What statement do you think best explains the idea? 1. Lewin Hook discovered red blood cells and sperms. 2. Biologists conducted experiments and discovered living things are composed of cells. Is it A, one only, B, two only, C, one and two, D, neither one nor two? The correct answer for number nine is letter C, one and two. Okay, number ten question. Cells are considered as a structural and functional unit of life. Do plants and animals have the same type of cell? A. Yes, human and animals have the same type of cells. B. No, human and animals are different in terms of shape. C. Yes, all our organisms are composed of cells. Thus, they have the same type too. And D. No human and animal cells are different in shape size, structures, and functions. Okay, the correct answer here is letter D. No, human and animal cells are different shape, size, structures, and functions. Good scene. In the previous module, you were able to describe the different levels of structural organization making up an organism. With that, you learned that each organism started from the very basic level known as the cell. It can be noted that when cells are grouped together, they form tissues. The tissues in turn will form the organs and further form the organ systems in a body. Hence, when organ systems interconnect with each other, 
they compose the organism. In biosphere, organisms interact with their environment. This can be determined at their survival, growth, development, and mortality rate. This lesson will help you dig deeper on the importance of the basic unit of life which makes us you and me. It is our goal to let you explore what is in a cell in our new lesson. Are you ready? What's new? Let's your excitement for the new lesson come out here. You will be provided with activities that will enlighten you how scientists were able to discover and unravel the mystery of the unseen world of the cell. Find out what they discovered a long time ago and how it all, it all happened. So let's get started. So this is the timeline of the cell discovery. In 1665, Robert Hooke was the first person who used the term cells to refer to the tiny structures found in organisms. He observed a piece of cork with the use of microscope which he himself had, had made. There he observed box-like compartments in the cork. Hooke thought they looked like the small rooms or cells of old monasteries. He then called these structures in a cord as cells. What hook will show where the outer boundaries of cells? Uh, they look like empty boxes because of the cells were dead. He did not study further on the cell content. In the year 1674, Anton van Leeuwenhoek, who was a Dutch lens maker, was credited with making the first microscope. He was the first person to have observed microscopic organisms. He discovered protozoa and saw bacteria some, some nine years later. In 1838, Matthias J. Schleiden was a German botanist who worked on various plants. He concluded that all plants are composed of cells. In the year 1839, Theodor Swan was a German zoologist, someone who studies various animals. He theorized that all animals are composed of cells. And lastly, in 1858, Rudolf Virchow was one a German physician discovered that cells increase in number of by dividing and forming new cells. He expounded his famous conclusion, omnicellula acellula, which means cells come from pre-existing cells. So that is our timeline for cell discovery. So this is the cell theory summary. That all living things are composed of cells. Cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. All cells come from pre-existing cells. So let's have this one, direction. So let's have this as a short answer. Read and answer what is being asked. K in your answers in our class point up with a class code of 28339. You need to arrange the events in chronological order as 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 with 1 as the oldest and V as the latest event. Okay, so let's have this one. Okay, time is up. This is the answer. For number 1, we have the tiny chambers that look like empty compartment were called cells. That's correct. For number 2, Microorganisms like bacteria and protozoa were seen under a microscope. For number three, a German scientist studied plant cells. For number four, Swan studied animal cells. And for the last is, the scientist concluded that cells come from pre-existing cells. So let's have the second part. Identify the scientist being described in a box. Select your answers. You're given Anton van Leeuwenhoek, Matthias Seleiden, Theodore Swan, Jan Evangelista Porkenji, Robert Brown, Robert Hook, and Rodolf Virtue. What do you think? Okay, you're given a time. Here is the correct answer. For number one, he concluded all that all plants are composed of cells, that is Matthias Seleiden. He theorized that all animals are composed of cells, that is Theodore's one. The person who discovered the cells is Robert Hooke. He stated that all living cells come from 
pre-existing cells is Rodolf Virtu. And the first person who observed microscopic organism is Andan van Leeuwenhoek. What is it? Cells are considered as a basic structural and functional unit of life. Why? Definitely because cells are the building blocks of organisms. Life processes happen in cells. All organisms are composed of cells. Without cells, there would be no life forms in this planet. The number of cells vary depending on the size of an organism. As you have learned from your previous module, life begins with a cell. The larger the body of an organism, the greater number of cells are present. Likewise, the smaller the body of an organism is the least number of cells are expected. The number of cells in elephant is a hundred times more than that of humans. Let's move. There are multicellular and unicellular organisms. Organisms with only one cell are called unicellular, such as paramecium, euglena, and coccus. Organisms with millions of cells are multicellular, like animals, plants, fungi, and protists. Cells are basically composed of water, proteins, RNA, DNA, and several organelles, different structures in a cell, and water is considered as the largest component. Okay, let's move up this. We should be thankful to our scientists for their contributions to the discovery and study of cells. What they discovered greatly improved technological ad advancement. So here are the guide questions and here are our answers. What is considered as a building block of nature? That is cell. And for number two, are all cells multicellular? Please support your answer. No, because cells are classified as unicellular and multicellular. Number three, give an example of unicellular organisms. Okay, any of these, euglena, paramecium, or coccus. Number four, differentiate a unicellular organism from a multicellular organism. Unicellular are single-celled organisms, while multicellular are organisms with million cells. Can there be tissues, organs, and systems without cells? None, because life begins with a cell. Okay, so here are also another activity. So what's more? From the preceding activities, you gained important information about the cell, its history, and related theory. At this point, you need to complete a mind map. So this is a mind map showing numbers from 1 to 6. Okay, it shows important phrases about your lesson. Copy the format below and supply the empty shapes with phrases to create a big picture of the concepts about the lesson. Do it in separate sheet of paper. Okay, so here is our answer. Okay, number one, the cell was discovered by Robert Hooke. Number two, the cells were discovered in 1665. Number three, microorganisms were first observed in 1674. Cells are the basic of life. All living things are composed of cells. And lastly, all cells are come from pre-existing cells. So next is what I have learned. Directions complete the diagram by supplying the boxes left blank with correct word, statement, phrase, and name of a person to complete the idea. Do it on activity sheet provided. So I'm going to give you this with a short answer. So this is the cell. This is the blank. Number one. Okay, what is this? Above or below multicellular. And Robert Hooke is 3, Anton Van 4, Rodolf 5, Theodore 6, Matthias 7. And cell theory, and what is number 8? Okay, so let's have the answer. For number 1, it is unicellular. For number 2, consists of million cells. 
Number three, Robert Hooke discovered the cells. Anton van Leeuwenhoek, he first observed microorganisms under microscope. Rodolf Bircho, he concluded that cells are come from pre-existing cells. Theodore Swan, he stated that all animals are composed of cells. And seven, Matthias, he theorized that all plants are composed of cells. And for number eight, under cell theory, all living things are composed of cells. That's all for this activity so we're going to give you this as assignment what can I do so you have shown confidence in different activities so further show me your master plus and you need to to do another test so you're going to write an essay about cell using the format as shown below okay so this will be the second part of your assignment and this is the rubric with four three two one scores with accuracy and content spelling and grammar so let's have this as assessment directions choose the letter corresponding to the answer k in in your answer in your in our class point up class code is two eight three three nine k for number one what is known as the building blocks of life Okay, that is correct. It is letter A, cell. How do you call an organism with only one cell? Very good. That is letter D, unicellular. For number three, how are organisms with many cells termed? Letter B, multicellular. Very good. How about number four, in what particular year were cells first discovered? Yes, that's correct. It's letter B, 1665. And number 5, who theorized that all cells come from pre-existing cells? Very good. That is Rudolf Virchow, letter C. Okay. So there is an additional activities here, crossword puzzle. So it's up to you to do this. Okay. So for part A, we have this and here are the answers. And for part B, so it's up to you. So there are questions there vertically and horizontally. So without further ado, if there is no question, thank you and good morning.